Hey there, everybody. So this is Dr. Susan Plank. Let's make sure we're going live here. So let's get things rocking and rolling. Okay, I think we're, I think we're set. Hey, uh, happy Monday, everybody. My name's Dr. Susan Plank. Uh, I wanted to reach out to you guys and share a little bit of information. This uh, has been a big concern for me as we've gone through the pandemic is how everyone is dealing with the stresses of what's being brought on. And we're seeing that it's, it's not just adults, but now we're worried about the stress of children and masks or no masks. And it seems like there's, there's more questions necessarily than answers. And whenever we are left in a state of flux, meaning we don't have clarity, we might not have clarity on a relationship. We might not have clarity on our finances. We might not have clarity on, heck, what the heck am I even gonna to do today, right? There's a lot of unknowns and those unknowns cause stresses to our body. And we have specific mechanisms in the body that are hormonal to start to deal with these stresses to keep us in balance. Uh, it's a homeostasis. If we get too worked up, it's going to pull us back to normal. If we get too down, sad, depressed, it's going to try to pull us back to normal. Okay. So it, it's uh, our adrenal glands are constantly working up and down, up and down. Oh, well, you know what? Well, we need to, we need a little bit more energy. Oh, we have to pull back a little bit. The reason this is, it's an innate part of us that it was in, initially intended to be fight or fright, meaning if, if you're being attacked, um, person, animal, scary situation, you're not sure what to do, your inherent, inherent, that innate mechanism is for you to escape if you can, to run away. Well, you know, unfortunately, we've, we've learned in this day and age that we can't just sort of, ah, just turn around and run away, right? We have to stand our and face our problems. But in standing to face our problems, we end up emotionally and physically internalizing these problems. And it's causing a lot of anxiety uh, and an upset. And we're seeing it as constricted blood vessels and hypertension and sleep disorders and, and things like that. The other interesting, fascinating part of how we're put together is then. The adrenal hormones are the precursors for our sex hormones. So the more stressed out you are, the more imbalances you could potentially have in your stress hormones, ladies for your menstrual cycle, guys for your testosterone level. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time today and sort of walk you through the steps of what this might look like, how what it should look like and then what it might look like uh, for some folks. So I, uh, let me share my screen here and we are going to hop over here. So again, our adrenals are how we handle stress. It's emotional stress and physical stress. Stress is any, anything sort of coming at us or something that if you're fighting an illness is still a stress. And so it's our adrenals are working to keep us in harmony, keep us balanced. So two main adrenal hormones is cortisol. And then the other is DHEA. So I use the example that we're sitting here, you know, chatting right now. And if somebody opened the door and Throw, threw in a wild animal, a wild animal is going to be freaking out. And then before your eyes, I'm going to be freaking out. Both the animal and I would be in fight or fright, right? Somebody's going to, somebody's going to try to get out of here. Maybe both of us are going to try to get out of here. But for both of us, the cortisol is going to skyrocket. The cortisol is going to shoot through the roof because it's the hormone to get you. I need to get out of here. I need to run away. I need to be safe. What goes along with cortisol is your heart rate starts pounding faster, your blood vessels constrict, 
your breath becomes faster and more shallow. Okay. Everything's sort of exploding in your body. Everything's on fire. It just go, 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 be safe, run, run for the hills. That's cortisol. What DHEA does is it brings things back down. It's the balancer to cortisol. So cortisol, you should, it's a normal response to feel some stress and the cortisol can be elevated, but then the DHEA should respond and bring everything back. Like I said, the harmony, relaxation, the heart starts to calm down. The heart rate returns to normal. The blood vessels aren't as constrictive. The blood pressure is not as high. You're not as anxious. It doesn't feel like your shoulders are attached to your earlobes anymore. So there is a way that we can test these. So we can test these hormones in blood, but the thing with hormones is they are in flux. Like I just said, if somebody you know scared me right now, my cortisol instantaneously would go through the roof. So by testing it in blood, it can be very transient, right? It can change very, very quickly. So what we find is saliva actually has a more stable medium for keeping these hormones and it doesn't react as much to get these big swings that can happen in our bloodstream. So what I wanted to show you is the beauty of doing the testing this way is with blood, you're going to get your blood drawn, usually first thing in the morning, right? You get your blood drawn, that's your reading, however it is. But cortisol, when you wake up in the morning, it's known as a cortisol awakening response, meaning just the process of you waking up, coming out of that slumber, right? Just the process of you waking up is a little bit of an adjustment to get used to. And that will increase your cortisol release just coming out of sleep to get ready for your day. Let alone if you're one of those folks that you're waking up on, oh no, I don't wanna go to work. I don't wanna, it's Monday, I don't wanna do it, right? It's, you're gonna have a really exaggerated cortisol response. So what I wanna show you is when we do these tests on saliva, you're going to see that there's this morning, right? This increased bump here, this cortisol awakening response. And then it should be like a stair step. So lunchtime, right? It's, it's lower. And then three o'clock in the afternoon, it's lower. And then by the time somebody's going to bed, right? That hormone that's sort of coursing through your veins when you're nervous, anxious, excited, it should be at the lowest point. Makes sense, right? It does make sense. You want that hormone that's very excitatory to be at its lowest point when you're getting ready to go to bed to get a good night's sleep. So what we're finding though, is folks, this dysregulation and folks are maybe laying in bed and maybe you're when you're laying in bed on your, on your device and you're reading stuff about the pandemic or whatever else it is, and you're getting yourself more anxious when we should have this cortisol decreasing. So what I wanna show you here is we see for this individual is the 9 a.m., a little after 9 a.m., their cortisol is higher. It's all sort of off the chart here. So it's very, very high, even higher than the expected cortisol awakening response. Cortisol is known as the belly fat hormone so the higher it goes, the more it's not regulated and kept in normal ranges. So again, it's normal to have a little increase, but to overshoot what's normal and to have it first thing in the morning means that person is going into fat storing mode first thing in the morning. Whatever's going in and heaven forbid it's you know, a banana or something as you're running out the door, or maybe you're one, you, you don't eat breakfast, your body is just going to hold on to every single calorie that goes in. It's holding on to it. Okay. So again, cortisol is known as the body fat hormone. 
So we can see, right, that we get a little bit of a stair step, but that five o'clock reading goes a little bit higher, but we do see a nice drop when this person is going to bed. Now, sometimes we can see these ratings, these readings high the entire day. That person's really, really stressed out. In my experience, what I've seen is this is going on for individuals and no one's checked it. And this is when we'll have folks that have been put on, you know, sedatives, anti-anxiety medications, maybe even antidepressants because the symptoms are just going on and they've, it, it's sort of medication roulette, you know, like, well, this one didn't work. Let's try another medication. Let's try another medication. And, and what's happening is it's, it's their own response. And until we address it, until we evaluate it, and we can target it to try to get this balanced, those medications are, they're just not gonna overcome the body's innate response. But it is possible to get this balanced and to do it naturally. So what we can see then for this individual, so the, again, the beauty of this testing is not only uh, is it sex dependent, it's also age dependent. So you can see this individual, little over 30 years old, right? Here's their DHEA. It's in the normal uh, range. It's a little high optimal, but that's okay. So it's not getting necessarily pulled down too dramatically, which it can be. If that cortisol stays up and the DHEA is always being produced to pull it down, that's what's called adrenal fatigue. When your body just can't keep up with the demand, for these excitatory hormones. And when you're under stress all the time with no relief, if you feel like, hey, I've had it, one more thing and I'm, I'm gonna snap. If you thought that, or maybe you've even uttered those words, chances are your hormones, adrenal stress hormones are depleted. If someone you know is like that, they're having a hard time sleeping, they seem very anxious all the time, uh, chances are heart palpitations, chances are their adrenals are out of balance. And honestly, I don't care what anti-anxiety you put in there, you're not going to fix those adrenals. You might tweak a little bit of the symptoms of the anxiety, but they have not fixed or addressed the adrenal imbalance. So again, that's the adrenals, sex and age dependent. And if we, it's beauty of it, we get reading throughout the day, not just one thing in the morning, throughout the day. Now, what I'd like to show you on this slide, and hopefully you can see this okay, is we're seeing this is the normal hormone cascade. So hormones in our body, whether you're male or female, are produced and metabolized and utilized in the same way. It's just that women have more estrogen and men have more testosterone, but the pathways are identical. So what we're seeing here, we can see that DHEA, right up here, DHEA, DHEA, you can see it's at the top of the hormone progression. The very top is actually pregnenolone, and pregnenolone is known as the mother of all hormones. So what my point is, is I wanted to show you this on a chart that's what's considered normal, that if you're lacking in either of these, chances are you're going to have a problem down lower. So let me uh, sort of walk you through this process here. So what we can do then is, again, checking saliva, checking the steroid hormones, our adrenals and our sex hormones, saliva, sometimes blood. Saliva is more stable, we start to get these readings. Okay. And this might just look like a lot of gibberish to you, but we're actually testing these readings and I'm going to show you how important this is. So we're getting some nice hormones estradiol, estriol, estrone, testosterone. So again, it doesn't matter, man or woman, young woman, young man, our hormones are our hormones. We want to check age and sex dependent. Are they where they should be? We definitely don't want 
a woman that's postmenopausal with an estrogen level of a, of a woman that's 26 years old, right? We have to be smart about this. So this is the part that's sort of scary to me when folks are using you know, medications or doctors aren't even testing, or maybe somebody's even using something natural like a yam cream, but it's producing a hormonal effect in the body, which can create imbalances. So again, here's all the hormones. So here's that pregnenolone, right? Testosterone, DHEA, 7-keto. That's a, that's a uh, adrenal that doesn't convert to a sex hormone. You can see here, the rest of them convert. So uh, these are all tested for in saliva. So again, normal hormone cascade. Now, this is what I want to show you where the, the uh, individual's results were. This is a young woman that had, had her whole life menstrual regularity. And what happened is no one ever tested her hormones. I hate to say that to you. I hate to admit that to you. No one, no doctor, no gynecologist, no one she ever saw tested her hormones. But they had no problem giving her multiple different birth control pills. The birth control pills only masked the monthly symptoms she was having. Birth control pills will not rebalance hormone imbalances. Let me say that again. Birth control pills will not balance hormone imbalances. If they do, it was completely by happenstance, by accident. It was not planned. And especially just ask yourself, if the hormones aren't being tested for, how does the physician even know what hormone we're trying to boost and what hormone we're trying to lower if they weren't even tested. So this is really, you know, it, it's sort of a, a point that, that drives me a, a little crazy, um, but I, I do, I wanna sort of get you guys to hang in here with me. So what we did, what I did then is after we ordered these tests and to do this presentation for you, I took the results and I put them, plugged them into this saliva cascade. This is the way the hormone should be. What we're seeing for this young woman is her pregnenolone was low. If you remember what I just said, it's called the mother of all hormones, pregnenolone, the mother of all hormones, all steroid sex hormones, all of these down here come from pregnenolone. And the other part that's not even brought up on here is to have the nice backbone of hormones, you need cholesterol. So the driving of cholesterol to a very low level is not ideal if you wanna have hormones at a nice balanced and healthy level. So that's another, that's sort of another caveat, another area we have to keep in mind with this sort of this fear of cholesterol has been made such a, a bad guy that we're gonna drive it into the ground but then we're definitely gonna cause hormone imbalances by doing that. All steroid hormones have cholesterol as the backbone of that hormone. So again, pregnenolone here, the mother of all hormones, and this is low. So right there, common sense. The first question I ask myself, if this is low, then in reality, everything else should be low. If this, the top, part of the funnel, the very top hormone is low and all other hormones are going to be made from that hormone. Common sense tells us all the other hormones should be low. That's common sense. But medications and the body don't work by common sense. So what happens is in here, these little arrows you see, these are all enzymes that convert one hormone into a metabolite or another active hormone. And so pregnenolone gets converted into progesterone, but we can see the progesterone is low. 
So the mother of all hormones is low, progesterone is low, and yet you can see all the rest of these, estradiol, testosterone, all the rest of these, the H stands for high. You got it, guys. All these hormones are high. How did this happen? It can be a couple of ways, actually. Every hormone, testosterone, um, every steroid hormone ultimately converts into estrogen, and that is handled by the liver to try to get rid of it. If we have a liver issue, if we have problems with these enzymes, okay, it can start to build up. And it will, when it builds up, we have what's called estrogen dominance. In women, it's going to be a larger middle section, maybe larger hips, buttocks, estrogen dominance. It can start to change personality. For men, it's going to make a guy estrogen dominant. So a man is going to have more weight around the same bigger hips, but also potentially develop breast tissue. Okay. So we have to, and we need to look at every avenue here of can the liver flush out what's going on, right? Can it get rid of it? So that's where the digestive system comes into play. Liver function, if you have fatty liver, chances are you're going to have hormone imbalances. If you're constipated or diarrhea, chances are you're going to have hormone imbalances. Okay. So the reality of what's happened here is this poor individual was given multiple different birth control hormonal treatments over, you know, 12 years. Well, this one doesn't work. Let's try this one. Let's try that one. And again, it wasn't, it wasn't as like not an unwanted pregnancy thing. They were given the the birth control pills to try to control the, the monthly cycle and the pain and emotional uh, insults that this individual, the anxiety and the stress that this individual had. And so by constantly sort of changing every couple of months, changing these birth control pills, the body never could really recover and no testing was done. So no one ever knew that, well, heck, back when she was a teenager, chances are she had hormone imbalances because her body wasn't producing enough hormones in the first place. So instead of stopping and someone doing the testing and evaluating it nutritionally to get really good functional information, it was, let's give medication, let's give birth control pills, let's try this, let's try that, like a, a human guinea pig. And now by the time, you know, she's in her early 30s, now we have a mess. We have still low hormone production here because it, well, why is it ever going to get fixed? It was never addressed. And now we have all these hormones that are just sort of built up and they're overflowing. There's too much of them and the body doesn't want to do with them. The body can't get rid of the hormone. So everything that's made at the top, there's not enough of it, but it's just cascading down and it's just sort of drip, 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 adding to these. And these are all too high. Can you imagine what a woman feels like if her testosterone level is too high? Can you imagine the symptoms she's having? Is she going to be a little aggressive? Is she going to be more upset? Is she potentially going to have, you know, a little bit of beginning of facial hair? Of course. Of course. High estradiol. So is she going to gain weight? Is she going to gain weight very quickly? Is it going to be around her belly, her hips, her buttocks? Absolutely. Without a doubt. And it's going to be going on for years and nobody will have recognized it. Nobody did anything to stop it. And the other part about this is now we see over here, we see these elevated corticosterone and aldosterone. Folks, these control minerals and the mineral balance in our body. And so now guess what we're seeing? Now we're seeing this poor individual, a young woman, 
was high blood pressure. Uncontrollable high blood pressure. So guess what they do? Add in another medication, add in another medication, add in another medication, right? When's enough? Three, four, five? I don't know. We're just going to keep adding them in until we get the blood pressure to come down. You're never going to get the blood pressure to come down because no one ever checked the hormones. No one ever checked the enzymes. No one ever used, hopefully, what they used, learn in school to help this individual. These are the types of cases that this individual suffered for years, years, because the very basics of hormone production and hormone elimination was skipped and hormones weren't even tested. So does it matter? These, of course it does, because I already said the cortisol, how a person's handling stress, do you think a young woman with ongoing menstrual problems each and every month for years isn't under stress? And cortisol is a fat storing hormone. So of course we went from hormone imbalances to now there's weight and weight gain. Do you think an individual, a woman or a man with hormone imbalances, if they're trying to lose weight, do you think cutting calories Eating less and less is going to help them lose weight? It isn't because the problem is more hormonal than it is the amount of calories that they're eating. And this is why we see these frustrating cases of the person trying eating less and less sort of chronic dieting when the imbalance is the hormones and it's never been checked. Trust me, it's never been corrected and it breaks my heart. So thanks for hanging in there. I hope you found this informative. I'd love to be able to talk to you. If you're having any symptoms, if you've been frustrated, if you think, hey, yeah, you know what? But that case history is sort of similar. I've, I've been put on multiple birth control pills or you know, I don't even take them anymore because my menstrual cycles are irregular. Or maybe you're a guy saying, you know what? I've had my testosterone checked or I wish I should have it checked. It's time to get it done. We need to know what the level should be for your age and sex, not just a random number. So please, I'm having a free hormone consult. Just go to Norwin Wellness, Dr. Susan Plank's Norwin Wellness Center. And if you scroll about halfway down on the first page, the homepage there, you're gonna say, get valuable health insights for free. You can do, I invite you, please do all these steps. But number three, schedule with me. Let's find out what is going on. It's a free 15 minute, 30 minute consultation. Whatever time we need, we're gonna get it done. I wanna find answers for you. But we gotta find out what you've tried, what your symptoms are, so we can start getting things pointed in the right direction. There is help for hormone imbalance. There is help if you think you're gaining weight or you gain weight very quickly and you suspect hormones are the issue. The best thing to do is let's get them tested. Let's get checked because that's the only way we know for sure. If we don't assess, if we don't test, it's a guess. And I hate to say it, but this is a perfect example. Perfect example, this poor woman. This is a perfect example of multiple doctors that just kept guessing. And it's unacceptable. Thanks so much for listening. I really wanna help you. Please, norwinwellness.com. Scroll halfway down the page. You're gonna see this Get Valuable Insights. Schedule symptom relief, weight loss, consult. It's free. I look forward to talking to you. Have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now.